John Hansard Gallery, part of the University of Southampton, is one of the UK's leading contemporary art galleries, and we are proud to play a dynamic role in the cultural life of Southampton and the region. As a city, Southampton doesn't have the sandy beaches, deck chairs and sticks of rock usually associated with seaside places, but it does have a long and varied maritime history. It is a coastal destination that has evolved from and is intrinsically connected to the sea through trade, shipping, travel and migration. It is a city that has been the point of departure or return for countless journeys and adventures. Seaside Photographed is a major exhibition that examines the relationship between photographers, photography and the British seaside from the 1850s to the present. The exhibition includes early photographic depictions of the sea, picture postcards revealing the glee and grime of coastal resorts, reportage, and intimate shots of holiday and relaxation. Here, the seaside is presented in a multitude of different visions and celebrates our special relationship with our coast. The seaside is a parade. We look and are looked at. Dressing up or dressing down, we are conscious of the gaze of others and how we define ourselves. Early portrait photographers were particularly drawn to the seaside, working on the beach as well as in the studio, giving their customers a chance to perform and to preserve memories. Early portraits were made to please their subjects, while later, portrait photographers saw the seaside as a backdrop for their own staging. The British seaside has provided endless material for artists and writers who have frequently seen the seaside as a backdrop for a theatre of the absurd. Photographs from the 1940s show seaside dance halls as a refuge from the bleakness of the blackout. From the 1960s onwards, emerging independent photographers saw seaside entertainments as organised fun, where everyday tensions were released and familiar rituals reenacted. For many who made images in holiday camps in the 1970s, the results were raucous and full of amazement. At the edge of the land there is a fraying and a fragmenting where land meets sea. Some seaside resorts have revived themselves with new kinds of visitor, but many are precarious places with shifting populations and seasonal declines. Everything becomes frayed by salt and wind, by melancholy and memories, but in the sunshine, the ragged edges are less discernible and the beach becomes a space to eat, sleep and recover. Some seaside resorts are revived by émigré communities who bring energy and different perspectives. A little tattered, the British seaside remains in our hearts and our imaginations. The seaside centre is the beach. We enjoy it and at times endure it. For photographers, it is an extension of the street, full of bustle and event, of unguarded moments and peculiar contrasts. 
For post-war photographers working in Britain, photographing on the beach was a fast way of capturing national characteristics, observing eccentricities and habits. Families photographed each other and beach photographers photographed everyone. Photographers have documented the sea since photography was invented. Pastoralist photographers at the beginning of the 20th century saw photography as artistic expression and many were fascinated by the wildness of the sea. Early documentary photographers were intrigued by paddling and bathing. A revival of popular culture in the 1960s led to a renewed interest in seaside artefacts, notably the picture postcard. As islanders, the British are always close to the sea and it remains a focus for the imagination and a prism through which to view a nation's history and heritage. The Seaside Hotel occupies an important place in British culture. From the early company houses, where visitors provided their own food, to the boarding houses, whose landladies became the stuff of legend. The Seaside Hotel is an important yet vulnerable part of the coastal economy. Famous for both eccentricity and rigid rules, the small hotel became a focus for satire, comedy and drama, an arena for conflict and despair, or a place of hiding. Photographers are repeatedly attracted to the idiosyncrasies of seaside hotel interiors, documenting the settings that occupy a very particular place in our imagination. The excitement of being part of a crowd from the mods in the 1960s gathering on the south coast to the young alternative travellers of the 1990s, time at the seaside was time out of the normal. For many, the coast is one of the few free spaces in a country where communal outdoor space is either disappearing or is rigidly monitored, with much rural landscape privately owned. The use of out-of-season hotels or holiday camps for music, dance or fetish weekenders provides a meeting place for those whose interests exist outside of the mainstream, ready for a party. Often associated with cheap holidays and bad weather, the British seaside is also a place for innovation. Inexpensive housing, sea views and remoteness have historically attracted many artists to the coast, where they formed communities and produced significant work. Artists' colonies enabled opportunities for experimentation. Paul Nash lived on Kent and Dorset coasts, and in Swanage, Helen Muspratt photographed the artistic community. In Suffolk, composer Benjamin Britten and tenor Peter Pears founded the Albra Festival. Modernist architects were able to experiment more freely at the coast, designing notable and experimental houses and public buildings. Fleeting trips to the seaside have been part of British culture since the second half of the 19th century with the arrival of cheap public transport, railways, paddle steamers and charabangs. The day trip continues to provide many opportunities for photographers as people congregate and celebrate communally. Cut loose from the everyday, the atmosphere is heightened. Nowhere in Britain is more than 70 miles away from the sea and the day trip was the first manifestation of mass tourism at a time before paid holidays became the norm. In an album, 
in a box tucked away. The family photograph commemorates the seaside holiday. Awkward in our shorts and swimming costumes, stretched across the sand, eating, drinking, laughing, uncomfortable on the pebbles. We remember those days at the seaside acutely. Longer, sunnier, more rainy in recollection than in fact. For some the seaside was close by, a part of everyday life. For others it was a journey full of expectation. Photography captures those moments, but recollections can fade and photographs look mysterious, even when we are in them. That's me, we shout, until we can no longer recognise ourselves.